singing through the pain. I am the start again. I'm praising on the battlefield. I'm singing through the pain. My God, you have to live in me. I know you will again. Why would I worry? What should I feel? Solid rock. 
God, yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Oh, thank you, God. Thank you, God. Let's just sing that one more time. Thank you, Jesus. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory. is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. One more time. For yours is the kingdom, the power, the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Whoa. Thank you. Thank you, Lord, for your presence here this morning. 
thank you for your presence with us every single day. Thank you as we gather here this morning, we feel the depth and the breadth and the thickness of your presence here amongst us and in us and with us today. Oh, there is none like you, Lord. We could linger here all day just to be still before you, just to take the things of the week and put them aside the things that are troubling us, the things that we are waiting answers for. Lord God, we just come into your presence this morning to spend this time honouring you, glorifying your name and knowing you are where we need to be in you, Lord God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father, for sending Jesus. Thank you, Jesus, for leaving us with the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Wow. Good morning, church. How are you this morning? Good to see you all. Hey, guys. Hi, online. Lovely to see you watching, whether you're watching right now or later in the week. It's an amazing thing we have, our online service, because it connects us any day of the week. So we're grateful that you're with us today. And if you're joining us for the first time or the second time, welcome here. Great to have you with us. Yay, awesome. Tea and coffee's on us in the cafe afterwards, so hang around, get to know some people. We love meeting new people and connecting you into our, our family so you can have a sense of belonging here as well this morning. Great. So during the service, if you have a prayer request and you're online, please pop it in the chat. Uh, we love to pray with you, and that's what we're going to be doing right now. So while we're standing... Just start to put your, thank you. It says this in Psalm 121 verse 1. I lift my eyes to the hills, for where does my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made heaven and earth. That's where our help comes from. Not our ideas, not our scheming, not our thinking, well, I'll just think this and I'll sort of pray about it and God will get on top of it. No, our help comes from Him. We're in partnership with Him. It's not because we can't do things by ourselves. We were designed to do it with God. So this morning as we pray, this is where our help is coming from this morning. It's coming from our Lord. So whatever is on your heart, whatever you're, at, you're want, needing his help in, whatever it is, lift it to the Lord because that is where your help comes from. This morning, Lord God, we thank you. We thank you so much that we can come to you with our requests, Lord God. We can come to you with our troubles. We can come to you with our fears and our doubts, Lord God. We can come with the things that mess with our thoughts, Lord God, and give them over to you. And with that, Lord God, you fill them with your way, with your ideas, with your love poured out for us, Lord God. Because you want nothing but the best for us, Lord. So we lift those that are needing healing to you today, Lord God. And we say, in Jesus' name, be healed. We thank you, Lord, for your healing in people's hearts, in people's minds, in people's relationships, Lord God. We thank you for your healing in their sickness, Lord God, because by your stripes we are healed. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, God. God, and for relationships that are hurting, Lord God that are aching, Lord God. We pray your hand upon them, Lord God, that you bring relationships back together, Lord God. And Lord God, relationships that are hurting, that, that need to be removed, Lord God, we pray that you remove those relationships, Lord God. 
And God, we cry out for those that need to come to know you, Lord God, that need that love, that forgiveness that only you can bring, Lord God. We pray for them this day, that they will come to know you, Lord God, that we will cross their paths, Lord God, and we will be able to speak your love into their lives. We thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for this movement that we're in, C3 movement throughout the world. We thank you for the, uh, the leaders of our movement, Pastor Phil and Chris Pringle, Lord God. We thank you that you bless them, Lord God, as they navigate the days ahead, Lord God. And we thank you for the leadership that flows under them, Lord God. We thank you for your hand of blessing upon each and every one of them. And Lord God, for our own church, we lift up our pastors, Josh and Kate, Lord God. And we thank you that you navigate them well, Lord God. That the help that they're seeking from you, Lord God, comes clear with clear answers, Lord. As they trust in you, Lord God. As they put their faith in you, Lord God. That they will see their prayers answered, Lord God. You bless them this day abundantly, Lord God. And all those that lead people and look after people, be it in church, in their positions, their, their, their professions, we thank you, Lord God, that your hand is upon them. You guide this country well, Lord God. You speak to our leaders, Lord God, of the nation, of our states, of our councils, Lord. God, we thank you that we know that our help comes from you. And everybody said... Amen. Amen. Could I just have uh, some water up here? Sorry, I'm a bit dry in the mouth. Thank you. Ah, that's better. My top lip has lifted off my teeth. It's great now. <laughs> really good. <laughs> um, I'm sure you all wanted to know that, but... <laughs> <laughs> it works better for me, let me tell you. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Well, we're going to go in for a time of communion right now. So um, this is just such a special time to come together and remember what has been done for us. I want to take some time with this this morning. During the week, I've been thinking about um, what I was, you know, what, what is it that means so much to me, but more than that, what is it that God has done for me and for others? And that is that he has forgiven us. Thank you. And you let, just let's sit on that while, we're, while I'm talking and while the communion's being handed out. Forgiven. It's a big word. And it has such an impact on all of our lives. 2 Corinthians 5.21 says, For God made Christ who never sinned to be the offering of our sins so that we could be made right with God through Christ. You know, sin's not talked about much in the world, <laughs> but we've all sinned. You know, there's no other way of putting it. Um, big mistakes, little mistakes, we've all, we've all done it, and, and we do still at times do that. Your sins, my sins, they've been forgiven. We have a new life that only came through Jesus. So he took our sins, as we know, all of them, the ones we'd done, the ones we continue to do sometimes, and died in our place, overcoming the power of darkness, the evil one, defeating death and rising again. So when you think about it, and it's not a, a, it's not a morbid thing, it's an amazing thing that he said, I will take all that they will do that separates them from the love of God and make it right. How powerful is that? And as he said on the cross, it is done. 
we are forgiven. Whoa, how cool is that? Anyone who comes to Jesus, as we know, is washed clean and becomes, and he became our sin sacrifice. So we are washed clean, made new. He stood in our place, coming to him. And we all need to come to him. Whether we've come to him already or we're wondering, is there something bigger than me? And there is. His name is Jesus Christ. And he died for us. And he is bigger. And all we have to do is say, forgive me, Lord. For I have gone and done the things and done things that you weren't planning on me doing. You knew I'd do them. But you made a way for me to come to you, to ask for forgiveness and to have you in my life. Is there something what we're holding on to today? We already know Christ, but sometimes we can distance ourselves because there's something that we just haven't gone and said, God, forgive me for that. That's why in Jesus we have short accounts. Having him in our life, we can go to him daily and say, whoops, messed up there. Forgive me, Lord. That's a powerful thing to have the forgiveness of the Father who created a way through Jesus Christ for us to come into relationship with him. When we do this, Psalm 103 verse 12 says, As far as the east is from the west, so does he remove our transgressions from us. As far as the east is from the west, from sunset to sundown, they can't come back on us. He removes them. And we say, what about that? And he said, what about that? It's already forgiven. It's already done. You've come to me. I've forgiven. Move on. Like he said to the woman in the well, sin no more. There is no other word needed. Forgiven is what he says. And when we do this, we have a life full of hope, peace, love and grace. A life that's eternal, a life, a new life that we live now and continue, we will continue to live eternally with God. His love is unfathomable. Oh, thank you, Jesus. So let's take communion together. Thank you, God, for Jesus and his sin sacrifice for us. Through this, we have been forgiven. His body broken, his blood shed. This made a way for a new life for each and every one of us through him. Jesus says to each of us afresh this morning, you are forgiven. So as you take the bread and drink the juice this morning, if there's something that's holding you, that you need to talk to God, talk to him about it. And then say to yourself, I am forgiven through Jesus Christ, my Lord and Saviour. Amen. Let's do this together, church. Thank you, Lord. I am forgiven through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. Beautiful. Well, kids, time for kids' church. Woohoo! Have a fun time. We've got in the back corner.
Wonderful. Oh, Judy's taking them out. There you go. Thank you, Mrs. Clark. Beautiful work. Great. Well, Pastor Josh, thank you. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Good morning, you? Josh. How are you doing? Oh, <laughs> we're I'm doing well. a bit of a dance. Okay. See you. Sure. That's good. Hey, it's my pleasure, my honor to do an offering word this morning. And so I'd love us to turn our Bibles to Psalm chapter 20. And while you do that, I, um, I, I ha- how good was Vision Builders? I had such a good time last month doing Vision Builders, excited about what God's going to be doing in our church in the next years, dreaming a little bit together. It's been so, so good. It was such a good party. Uh, s- some cool stats. We've had more people pledge to be a part of Vision Builders as like some kind of monetary contribution to Vision Builders than we did last year. There's more people also had a bigger number pledged than last year as well. So give yourselves a big round of applause. Isn't that cool? We are, we are in for a great, great future. Now, I also wanted to give you an update as well, because as, you, as many of you know, uh, some of you may not have caught up, uh, our main tenant, Amaze, Amaze Before and After School Care, they've been with us for 12 years, and they have just requested to, they're actually going to shut down their facility here, their, uh, their lease but they'll su- shut down their centre. And so we're going to miss them. Uh, we're going to miss them because it's been, they've been great people. They've been doing a great service to the community, but also because they've been helping contribute to our church mortgage, like actual, actual dollars as, as help. So that's, uh, we're going to miss them there. But we've been having some great fun in, uh, in working out what we're going to do next, who we can have to come and, and to use some of our space and so thanks to, thanks to all of you who have given ideas or suggestions or, or being willing to join, join and help our team to be able to organize this. But if you, there's still places or w- ways you can get involved. So if you want to come and talk to me afterwards, if you've got any ideas, any wisdom, you've got a, a chunk of money sitting in an account that you want to offset against our mortgage, or you want to give, or you want to join a team to, or you've got great commercial leasing experience, I don't know, whatever. Come and talk to us. It'll be great. We're going to solve this thing. But actually, that's a really good place for us to join to start our message out of today. It is because, actually, let's read this. It says in verse 4 of chapter 20, Psalm 20, it says, May he give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans succeed. What a great hope. Pray that over your kids. Pray that over your connect group next time you meet. May he make give you the desires of your heart and make all your plans succeed. We will shout for joy when you are victorious and we'll lift up our banners in the name of our God. May the Lord grant all your requests. Now I know that the Lord saves his anointed. He answers them from his holy heaven with the saving power of his right hand. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses, but we trust what? In the name of the Lord our God. They are brought to their knees and fall, but we rise up and stand firm. Who wants to rise up and stand firm? That's me. I want to do that. Some trust in chariots, some trust in horses. Now, that doesn't really fit in our context because I don't think anyone here trusts in horses. Everyone knows that horses are just going to be a big, uh, a big well that you're going to pour money into. Uh, chariots, we don't use chariots. You may trust in your car to get you to work, but let's, let's, let's just draw this out a bit. Some trust in their health, in, in the ability to get up in the morning and to be able to do, do work. Some trust in their ability that, they're, that, that they know that in the moment they're going to come up with a, a brilliant idea that's going to solve a problem at work. Some trust in their scores that they can leave school with so they can make sure the trajectory of their life doesn't go astray. Some trust in their marriages and some trust in their friendships. Some trust in in their emotional energy or their their, their self-worth or the way they look in themselves. Some trust in, no matter what you trust in, whether it's people liking you or not liking you, people being favorable to you. There are a lot of things that we can trust in. And I, I think it must be so hard not to have God, not to know that you can be with God, that God is with you. Because when you lack the confidence that God is with you, that God, like we talked through Ephesians, that God has a plan that he started right at the beginning of time, that he'll carry out to completion right at the end of time, 
A God that is so trustworthy, so faithful, so kind to you. The, the, the God that Jesus describes as your good father. And without that, you have to get confidence not from a person, but a principle, a thing, a gift. We have to get confidence from, we have to find confidence in all sorts of different places. But this is such great encouragement that you are not like those who fall. You are not like those who, who try and find confidence in the extremities of life, the little principles or just wisdom or, 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 or your own health or your stamina for life. Your confidence is in the Lord God Almighty. Your confidence is in the one who knows your needs before you even ask him. Your confidence is in the one who, who created all things, who stewards all things, and who will bring all things to completion. Your confidence is in the Lord. Yeah. I mean, and so, so us as, as a team, as we're planning uh, what we're going to do with this building and, and how we're going to steward this great facility and look after our mortgage, things like that, our confidence is not in people and our confidence is not in, even in, in you. Like, a, a confidence is not reliant on my own wisdom. My confidence is in the Lord God Almighty. Yeah. We look to the hills, and where does our help come from? Great scripture, Michelle. Our help comes from the Lord God Almighty, the creator of the heavens and the earth. How good is God? Give, some, give God some, glor some glory. And so no matter where you are in your life, as we come to give today, this is a great opportunity for us to put our trust in God, to demonstrate our trust, to say, God, we, we don't trust in principles or in our own work or in other people's favor towards us. The church needs to be strong, not in its own, ability, not its, its own self-worth, but it's in its God-worth, in, in its Father's worth of it. So let's be strong. As the world gets fiery, as the world gets worried, as the world gets confused, we are going to be those who stand strong and rise up. Yeah, let's do that. Amen. Let's close our eyes and let's, let's pray, prepare to give. Lord God, we, uh, we thank you so much, Lord Jesus, that you have given us the ability to trust in something rock solid. You are our firm foundation, our solid rock. And Lord God, we thank you that today as we, as we reestablish our foundations on you, God, there, there may be some of us who have gone this week trusting in things that are outside our control that aren't of you. Aren't of you. And Lord God, we put our trust back in you today. You are the author and perfecter of our faith. God, you are our firm foundation. Lord God, we, we trust in you no matter what, the li what our lives look like. You are our source. You give us the ability to produce wealth. You are a healing. You are a help. Lord God, we thank you so much for your deep, infinite care of our lives. You will never let us fall. May the work of our hands succeed. Not because we are good, but because you are. And you look after us in Jesus' name. Amen. We'll be blessed and give church. Thank you so much, Michelle. Thanks, Thanks Pastor Josh. Great word. Good message. I've just got a couple of updates for us before Mal comes to bring an amazing message. We are privy to a little bit of it in prayer. And um, it's going to be awesome. So stay tuned for that. We've got a very special night on Friday night, the 14th of July, which is this coming Friday night. We have our women's worship night, and it is going to be so good. So I think that deserves a round of applause. Yes, beautiful. We are having a great time. We're looking after our girls. So guys, you should be very happy about those that have a wife. And we're having dinner first at 6.30. And then we're going into worship. Now, we have a special guest, uh, Pastor Creone Hickson from Springfield Lakes. Amazing worship, worship leader she is. Well, she's a pastor, but she is a worship leader as well. And she is great. So don't miss this. A time just to spend 
together, but a time with God, a time to worship, a time to pray. We're going to have communion as well. So we're going to be fully soaked in God's love and forgiveness and everything that is powerful in God. So that's this Friday night, 6.30. Uh, now there's the QR code so you can register online. We'd love you to do that because we've got food and we've got dessert. So we need to know how much we need which is really good. So $10 for adult ladies, $5 for our youth. Um, so we would love you to be here. Look forward to worshipping with you. So put that in your diary and we'll see you Friday night. Okay, thanks, Reese. Thanks, Michelle. the key
so good to worship you. You're a good, good God. God, we praise you this morning, Lord. We worship you. Thank you, Lord. Well, it's great to be in the presence of God this morning. It's also great to uh, worship God and unhook technical issues at the same time. It's, it's amazing. So I'm just unhooking this. I'm all, I'm all good now. I'm sweet. Thank you. Praise God. Well, good morning, everyone. Why don't you grab your seats? We are in for an interesting ride this morning, I hope, and I pray. Um, we are in, a, in the midst of an amazing series. When Josh announced the series last week, I was, I was pumped uh, because really um, one of the cries of my heart for a long, long time is, 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 is trying to get that, that, that balance in life where you, where you go... I'm, I'm with God and I'm focused on Him and Him alone um, as opposed to I'm doing the things in life to get to God, which is, which is never, ever what we preach. It's just, it's, it's, but the subtleties in life are so profound that, that we, we always find ourselves slipping. We always find ourselves kind of moving in that direction. So we're going to uh, have a little bit of a look into the early church uh, this morning, and uh, basically, the um, I'll uh, just pause for a second there. Um, the exact birth of the early church, as a matter of fact, there were a couple of things that happened. The first thing was Jesus said, Wait in Jerusalem until you receive power from on high. And so they waited, and they waited, and they waited. And then the Holy Spirit came in, in ultimate power and, and came upon them so, so much so that the people who were basically, um, you know, reeling from the, the, the things that had happened, the death and the resurrection of Jesus Christ, Jesus going up to heaven, um, the, the situation with the Roman Empire at the time and, and still, still occupying Judea, still occupying where they were, the persecution that was coming from the Jewish people, their own people, all of that stuff's just going on, right? And um, you've got, you, and, and Jesus says, wait until you receive power and you will be my witnesses in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, and to the ends of the earth. And they stayed in Jerusalem after the day of Pentecost. And they were able to witness to a whole heap of people who had come into Jerusalem and they were kind of uh, taking the message out. And God moved powerfully through Peter on that day. And then a number of things happened. The, the, the people were getting together. The church was growing. The, the, there, were, there was just amazing things going on. And, um, and they appointed these guys called deacons. And there was a guy called Stephen. There was a guy called Philip. There was, there was a whole host of, of, of other ones. And they were just saying, hey, we just want to serve God. We just want to serve God. We just want to love God. And this guy, Stephen, gets up one day. 
and the boldness of God of the Holy Spirit filled him and he was able to articulate with such clarity from the beginning of scripture all the way to the, that current time exactly what the plan of God was with with such amazing clarity so so clear and it says that they were the people who heard him were cut to the heart and they some of them they couldn't handle it and they blocked their ears and they ran at him and they stoned him to death meanwhile while he was looking up to heaven and just just being received into the hands of God and Paul uh, and Saul who became Paul the guy who wrote most of the New Testament was standing by and the Bible says he actually was standing by with approval of what was happening and you you can imagine the dramatic monumental change that happened in Paul if that's where he started with approval and so Paul had actually taken it upon himself to basically harass the church destroy the church do whatever he, Saul sorry before he became Paul destroy the church do whatever he could and that's where this story begins that's a bit so we've got Samaria who was hated by the Jews as well so I'll give you a bit of background um, because they were the ones who were taken away um, when when um, when Nebuchadnezzar came in and, and, and Assyria, the Assyrians, all that kind of stuff, and they, they were taken captive, and then they intermarried with them, and then they came back, and they basically weren't pure Jews, right? And so they hated them. They, 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 there was this animosity, and that's why when Jesus was with the woman at the well, um, and they, the, the disciples were kind of like, why are you talking to this woman? And so Jesus had already kind of taken the first step. And then... Um, they were staying in Jerusalem, right? So, so we got, the, but we had this tinderbox going on, basically all across the Roman Empire, from Samaria uh, and through to the um, Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, to the ends of the earth. There's this tinderbox of people whose lives were turned upside down, people who who um, who were waiting. The, Samar the Samaritans were waiting for the promised Messiah, and in that tinderbox. A guy called Philip, um, go, one of those deacons, after Stephen was stoned, persecution hit the church, uh, um, even more so than it had already been, and so that pushed them out. And so God's plan was to get them moving. And so Philip was, was, was jumping over into Samaria. He said, all right, I'm, I'm going into Samaria. And he started preaching, and revival broke out. The revival erupted in the place. It, and and uh, so we, we catch us, it says here uh, in Acts 8, 4 to 5, but the believers who were scattered preached the good news about Jesus wherever they went. Philip, for example, went to the city of Samaria and told the people there about the Messiah. So the Samaritans were basically waiting for this promised Messiah and he said, we found him. He's, he, he came. He did this. He died, for, he died for you. You know, he died for your sins. He set you free. And... Um, and so, so the crowds, it says, it says um, in um, Acts 8, 6, it says the crowds listened intently, intently to Philip because they were eager to hear his message and see the miraculous signs that he did. Many evil spirits were cast out, screaming as they left their victims. And many who had been paralyzed or lame were healed, so there was great joy in the city. These guys that were ready to hear about the message of the Messiah received it. Not only that, God was just starting to make stuff happen there. People were being set free. People's lives were visibly and tangibly changed in, in amazing and incredible ways. And this is the birth of the early church. And this is the church starting to press out into the world and this is the message of Christ that eventually ended up impacting the entire of the entire world uh, everywhere um, and so um, I've already told you all that kind of stuff look at me go <laughs> but they're seeing this freedom firsthand they're seeing this Messiah come into their midst and um, and I believe that today if you if you're listening God wants us to experience that joy God wants us to see that when the message is preached, preach that signs and wonders do follow it, yes. right? Yeah. But in that order, just uh, and, and hold on to that thought. <laughs> so then um, in the midst of all that, we've got this, this stuff, and it's visible, right? 
It's actually visible. This, this, this town is saying there is an amazing power of God at work in, in this place through that man's preaching and, and what that man is doing. And then a man named Simon had been a sorcerer there for many years, amazing the people of Samaria and claiming to be someone great. Everyone from the least to the greatest often spoke of him as the great one, the power of God. They listened closely to him because for a long time he had astounded them with his magic. So this guy is, is actually um, visibly showing some kind of power as well. So it's very, very interesting that it, it's almost like there's a contest going on here. And he had actually been with the people of Samaria and he had, he, he had been demonstrating some kind of power. Um, you know, but he, he may have been preying on their superstition as well. Um, he, he could have been a fortune teller, he could have been using spiritual power, but he was certainly someone who was drawing the attention of these Samaritans and, 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 and making them think, wow, this guy has power. He's changing things. He's making things happen. And I think there's very real counterfeits that we see in this world. You know, there are very real, there is, we're in a spiritual battle, there's very real spiritual things that are at work in this world. There's also real counterfeits that, that, that don't necessarily take the guise of something that's super spiritual or anything like that. But there's things that are there that seem to put themselves up um, and, uh, to deceive us or to, or to, to take our focus um, away from the things of God. So the people were listening to him closely and they were astounded by his magic. And um, I wonder if there's areas that we fall prey to the shiny magic of our modern world. I mean, there's a lot of shiny magic out there. Um, you know, obviously, so people who came to our modern uh, civilization from the ancient world, they'd be like, wow, what? You've got, like, people on screens? <laughs> it's crazy. Um, so um, continue our story, though. But now the people believed Philip's message. So we've got Simon the sorcerer there. He's shown all this stuff going on. And then now, though, Philip had come in and they're believing his message. And what, what I always wondered about was the fact that you've got Simon the sorcerer, you've got this guy who's performing something that, that people say, this guy's the power of God. But then when Philip came in, it was like, oh, hold on. No, this is different. This is amazing. There must have been something that, that they visually saw or felt or, or experienced that, that demonstrated that God was there in their midst and this was, the, this was the real thing over what this other fellow had done, even though they had exalted him and, and said he was amazing. Um, so now the people believe Philip's message of the good news concerning the kingdom of God and the name of Jesus Christ. As a result, many men and women were baptized. Then Simon... Simon said, Simon said, oh my gosh. <laughs> Simon himself believed and was baptized. He, he, um, he began following Philip wherever he went and he was amazed by the signs and great miracles that Philip performed. Simon saw what was going on and went, I want it too. Yeah. I want this. Yeah. So Simon actually, I mean, it, there's lots of stories around this and lots of commentary around this, but basically, from, from just looking at it face value, Simon had an encounter with God, and he, he, he wanted his life changed. He wanted his life transformed. Um, and, and, um, but what I notice also is that Simon is seeing what is happening, and he's wanting to be a part of what he saw, but... But I don't know if there was something else away, held away in his heart where he, he, he wasn't changed on the inside. He just wanted to be a part of what was going on uh, because it looked like it was really good and maybe this was the next best thing or the next new thing. Uh, he'd been doing one thing and then now this is the next one. Um, and he wanted to chase after it. Um, and he was Because he was amazed, it says here, by the signs and great miracles that Philip performed. I mean, let's see some signs and great miracles in the church today. That's that absolutely, right? And, and we are. We're seeing amazing things happen, which is awesome. Um, so Simon saw what was happening and believed. He was baptized and he was following Philip around. I want to be part of this ministry. Let me go. Come on. Take me around. Um, 
And then, um, and then after that, Peter and John and the apostles in Jerusalem are like, something great's happening in Samaria, let's go. Right? They just got up and went. Um, and it says here, uh, when the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people of Samaria had accepted God's message, they sent Peter and John there. Then Peter and John laid their hands upon these believers and they received the Holy Spirit. When Simon saw that the Spirit was given uh, when the apostles laid their hands on people, he offered them money. Seriously, dude. Did you not pick up on the first bit? Um, He offered them money to buy this power. He said, let me have this power too, so that when I lay my hands on people, they'll receive the Holy Spirit. If I just give you some cash, can I have the power as well? That must be how they rolled back then. Um, uh, so, but Peter replied. Now, remembering this, of course, Peter um, Peter had been rebuked by Christ, and Christ had actually said said to him straight after he said, um, Peter said to to Jesus, "You are the Christ, the Son of the Living God." And, and Jesus said to him, "That's amazing. You know, you you that that's incredible, Peter." Um, you, you, you've got this revelation from God. You just know the heart of God. And then Peter said something else stupid, and then Jesus turned around and said, get behind me, Satan. So, so I mean, you know, P- Peter, had, Peter had the kind of the best of both worlds, and I, and I feel like he was, he was kind of channeling a bit of Jesus' get behind me, Satan, in this particular instance. Um, Peter replied, may your money be destroyed with you for thinking God's gift can be bought. Um, you... You can have no part in this, for your heart is not right with God. Repent of your wickedness and pray to the Lord. Perhaps he will forgive you um, your evil thoughts, for I can see that you are full of bitter jealousy and are held captive by sin. Pray to the Lord for me, Simon, ex- uh, uh, Simon exclaimed, that these terrible things that you've said won't happen to me. So Peter has ripped him a new one. He's, he's, he's just got straight into him um, and, and said, you cannot buy the, the power that he gives. But I think that there's something more behind this. Because Simon was seeing the thing. Simon was seeing the what. But he wasn't seeing the who. Yeah. And I, I don't know. Um, he, 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 was, he was pretty ignorant um, in terms of what he did. But Peter's calling out that his heart wasn't right with God. And I've seen that a lot pop up in Scripture, your heart being right with God. I've heard it in church for many, many years. Like, is your heart right with God? What does that, what does that mean, that your heart is right with God? And um, I wonder where our heart's at today. Um, we might not want to buy God's power. We certainly don't. Um, but maybe we, we misrepresent the hero in the story. Because who's the hero in this whole story? Well, yes, that's right. The Sunday school answer is Jesus. Um, the hero in the whole story is not Philip. Philip wasn't the hero, even though he went and did some heroic things. Um, the, it wasn't Simon. It wasn't Peter. It wasn't John. It was actually the Holy Spirit moving in the hearts of people that was the hero in this story. It was, it was God transforming lives, which was the hero in this story. It was God himself. Um, so time, Simon actually tried having power over the Holy Spirit. He wanted to use the Holy Spirit to, to do something. He might have even had good motives. He might have gone, gone, well, these people are getting set free. Can I have some, you know, can I, can I buy that power so I can do the same? Like maybe, you know, he had, he had good motives. But even our good motives turn bad when we don't know where the source is, when we don't know who our hope is. Um, and the miracles, the signs and wonders had captured his attention. And I think sometimes, particularly in Pentecostal circles, the miracles, the signs and wonders capture our attention. I was like, there was a great move of God. Let's go. I did it. I used to chase and chase and chase after this kind of, kind of stuff. I, I was even saying to Netta in the car, um, there, was this, there was this big ministry that was in town during the time I was at uni, and I had a friend of mine who called me up, and he said, you've got to get to Boondle. You've got to go right now. And I'm like, okay. So I just, got in, I, I just found whatever public transport I could get, and I got straight up to Boondle, and I was blown away. There was like, we were at Boondle Entertainment Centre, and there's... There are tens of thousands of people all worshipping God that had turned up for this thing, and I was, I'd never seen it before in my life. I was like, what? This is amazing. But 
I don't know if I was, I was going after God, but, but I don't know. You know, there, there, there's always that part of you that goes, well, am I, am I really? Like I was, I was sensing the presence of God and, and what have you, but, you know, and, and there's been other examples in my life where I've, I, you know, I would, I would go to this church and that church and all that kind of stuff and you'd be walking away, you're just, just going, oh, yeah, you know, I didn't feel God that day. Or, oh, yeah, no, that was awesome. You know, that, that was great, you know. And, and it's kind of like you're going after God, but you're not really. Yeah. You know, you, you seem to be hunting after an experience or, you, or hunting after, after something that's just not real, just not right. It's, it's, it's so subtle it kind of gets you. You know, Exodus 20, the, the first two commandments, uh, you shall love the Lord, uh, you shall have no other gods before me. No other gods. And the second one is basically um, just, just saying, hey, hey, do you know how that outworks? Don't have any idols because that's basically putting a God before me. And I think th- those times when we put an experience, we put, a, we put you know, anything else in front, we, we put, our, put our advice that we get off Instagram, TikTok, th- the, the new one, Threads, there's another one. Um, wait for it. Um, you know, that the, 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 the we start going after all of these things and we put all these idols up in place that we go to and that we focus on, we, we draw our attention to. And maybe they're good ones that look like that they're getting to God, but God's kind of behind this idol. Um, and even the Israelites made a sacred calf that they, they basically, was, they, they were making this calf, but they thought it was the image of, of God, the actual, you know, and they started worshipping it. Um, and our sin, all of our sin stems from breaking those two commandments of not having any other gods uh, uh, before him and making idols. Um, and Jesus said the first and greatest commandment was to love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, all your mind, and all your strength. And I think that's where he starts to flip it. Because instead of us focusing on the, the doing, the action, the making of the idols, he says, no, the first commandment, the first thing in your heart is to love God with everything in you. Is to ju- just love him. Love him. Because he even said the second one is, is love your neighbor as yourself. And that outflows from love him first, then love your neighbor. Um, so... God's always calling us to know him. And Philippians 3.10 says this, that I may know him and the power of his resurrection, the fellowship of his sufferings, being conformed to his death. And that word know in there is is gnosko in the Greek, and and it means to know more intimately than a husband knows their wife. It's, 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 it's It's a deep knowing that, that, that you, are, you are close to someone and you are, you are with them and, and near to them always and you share, you're sharing a life with them, right? And you're, you know, you're, you're you know, together and, and we, we want to know him. We want that to be the cry of our heart. Can I just know him? Can I just know him more? Um, and then Psalm 84 verse 10, I love this. It says, for, for a day in your courts, is better than a thousand. I would rather be a doorkeeper in the house of my God than dwell in the tents of wickedness. The heart of a person who just wants to, wherever I can be, I just want to be with you, Jesus. I just want you, Lord. A number of years ago, Hillsong released a, a song um, and it put the focus squarely where it needed to be. And I don't know why this song never took off, but the first time I ever heard it, it, it broke my heart. I'm not going to sing it for you today, but I'm definitely going to tell you the words. It's called You Are The One. And it goes like this. You are the one, the goal of my dreams, the end of my searchings for answers unseen. You are the one who sets my heart on fire, who lifts up the lonely and brings death to life. You are the one. You are the prize. You are the answer, the end of all desire. You are the one the word come to life, the love of the Father revealed in the Son. You are the one, my God, you are the one. You are the one who calms the stormy seas, who walks on the waters of my troubles and fears. You are the one we find in the fire. 
the flame of refining, the fire of love. You are the one, the author of life, creation's redeemer, the image of love. You are the one, freedom proclaimed, life everlasting in Christ has been gained. And the reason that caught my heart is there's a lot of worship songs out there and they're all glorious and they're all wonderful. But I've noticed that there's a difference. When you sing those songs, your whole soul focus is just you, Jesus. Netta and I were praying last night about something and I, I began to start to pray and I was thinking about this message this morning and I started to pray for the things and I stopped and I went, no. And I went, Jesus, we just love you for who you are. We just love you for, for putting us here. We just love you for being the wonderful, <laughs> amazing God who's, who's brought us this far. But we love you. And it, was, and it was just a focus on him. And I just felt the presence of God just, just, just hit us. And, and it was just changing the focus. There's nothing wrong with praying. There's, not, you know, there's nothing wrong with all the things that we do. We do some great things in terms of worshipping God and all that kind of stuff, but the focus needs to go back to him. He wants to be first with us today. Why don't you stand together with me? Now, maybe um, you're here. And Jesus hasn't been first. I reckon I could put my hand up straight away. We all can. Um, we, we all fall away. We all stumble. Um, and I think it, t- today would be a great day to reconnect with Jesus and to put him first again. Um, but also, maybe you've never, and, and online as well, maybe you've never encountered Jesus. You've never had a, a revelation of Jesus in your life. And today you, you've heard about this God that's amazing and beautiful and wonderful and wants to have a relationship with you, wants to transform you, wants to change you. And you too can have that relationship today. We went out to dinner the other night and uh, I went up to pay the bill. But you've, you've always got to wonder if somebody ha- else had paid that bill and and had... Um, you know, you turned up and you said, well, I'm, I'm here to pay the bill. And they said, well, well, it's been paid for you already. And um, when Jesus was hanging on the cross, he said, it is finished. And when you translate that in, out of, into the Greek, it's this word, uh, tel, telelestai. And telelestai was a, a, an old merchant's term. And basically, after the goods had been exchanged, the merchant handed handed the person this piece of paper and it said telelestai on it and telelestai meant paid in full and Jesus has paid the price for all of your sins all of your struggles and if I'd have said to the person uh, behind the counter at the at the restaurant um, hey yeah but you don't know what I've done you don't know all the things that I've done he said your bill's been paid you know you can't take that back (laughs) And I want you to know that Jesus on the cross, he's paid the price for your sins, everything you'll ever do, everything you've ever done, everything you're thinking right now, he's he's paid the price. And there's no way that you can stop him from paying that price. And all he wants you to do is say, hey, I want to connect with you, Jesus, and I want a relationship with you. You be be, be the Lord of my life. So if you want to do that today, why don't you all bow your heads with me and let's, uh, let's say a prayer to reconnect with Jesus or to connect with Jesus for the first time. Dear Jesus, thank you for loving me. Thank you for coming down, living amongst us, understanding us, and then going to the cross to die for our sins. I receive you today as my Lord and my Saviour and my very best friend. Thank you, Jesus. Amen.